Hey ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to MH Optical's YouTube page. Today, we're talking about tints. What you know, what you thought you knew, and maybe something you didn't know at all. Stay tuned. So, tints. What is there to talk about with tints? Well, let's understand what we're trying to do with tints in the first place. Our goal with tints is to reduce light transmission. We are trying to reduce the amount of light that hits the eye. Now, we wear protective clothing, we wear sunscreen on our body to protect our skin from the harmful rays of the sun. What do we do for our eyes? That's where sunglasses and tints come into play. Now, sunglasses aren't just for the summertime and at the beach. Sunglasses should be worn all the time, especially in the snow, in the winter, anytime the eye is gonna be exposed to bright lights for an extended period of time. A sunglass or a tinted lens should be worn. Let's quickly go over the different types of tints that are out there. It's not all cut and dry like everybody might think. So to start, we have a pre-tinted lens that comes from the manufacturer. This is a lens blank that we will surface into the prescription that's needed. Now these are great because they're pre-tinted. The lab doesn't have to tint them in a solution to get them to a dark color. It makes it easier for AR coding in the end. It keeps uniformity, so every time you order that kind of lens, you know exactly what you're getting. The next kind of tint that's out there is the polarized lens. This is also a pre-tinted lens blank that comes from the factory. However, this has a special polarized filter inside of the lens. Now what that does is it reduces glare. It allows light to travel only one way through the lens. That way, when you're looking into water or you're looking at snow, you're not gonna get that reflection back into the eye that you might see with a regular tinted blank. Now, one thing to note with polarized lenses is they're not for everybody. If you have a patient that's a heavy phone user or heavy screen user on their iPad outside, that's gonna interfere with the screen and it's not gonna be so comfortable on the eyes or on the brain having to deal with all that distortion that the polarized lens might cause. Another thing to note is that polarized lenses are directional. Always make sure you have some kind of checker in order to check that the polarized axis is on the 180 mark like it should be. Otherwise, you're doing the opposite of what you're trying to do with a polarized lens. The next type of tinted lens we're gonna talk about is a photochromic lens. Now, photochromic lens transition, most people know it as, is a lens that will change from a clear lens to a dark lens. Now, something to note with that, plastics are going to be an in-mass photochromic. And what that means is that the photochromic tinting agent that's inside of the lens is actually throughout the lens. It is poured in the resin mold. So when you tint, when you get to tinting the lens, the entire lens is going to tint. You'll tint faster and you'll tint darker than you will with a poly lens. Now, for example, if I try to tint this as a poly photochromic lens, I won't be able to tint it from the back because it is a coating on the front that's going to tint. Now, if I turn it around, you'll see how quickly it'll actually start to tint because you can't tint the whole lens. You're only tinting the front coating of the poly lens. Now labs can turn any lens into a photochromic lens by using a backside spin coat photochromic hard coating or dip coat hard coating. Always make sure you know what your lab's doing to make your lenses photochromic. Something new that's coming into the industry is AR tinted lenses. Now it's not actually an AR tinted lens, it's just the same process that we do for AR coating to put the tint onto it. They'll actually put the lenses into a box coater and they'll evaporate materials onto the lenses in the vacuum chamber to get them dark. It's something new that I look forward to learning more about in the future. Next up is mirror tints. Now, mirror tints aren't a tint per se. You still have to put them on a tinted lens blank to get the effect that everybody's looking for. But it's a great way to introduce fashion or a special look into the lens that people may be looking for if they don't want just a cut and dry tint on the lens. To apply a mirror to the lens, it's the same way that we apply AR, very similar. It goes into the vacuum box coaters, and then we apply and evaporate material onto the lenses to get that special mirror coating. Here's a semi-finished KBCO mirror blank. 
This one comes from the factory with the mirror coating already on the front and we just have to simply surface the backside and then it's ready to go out to the customer. This is a great option if you want a quick mirror tinted lens. So let's talk about solution tinting. Solution tinting is when we actually take the lens and we dunk it into the solution. Now what happens is that lens soaks up that material and it gets darker and darker the longer you leave it into it. This is how most fashion tints or gradients are applied because they can be totally customizable. That's the only way you could really customize is by doing a solution tinted lenses. Behind me is where we do a lot of our tinting here. Now, like I said before, every lens that needs to be tinted in a solution comes over here. Keep in mind, tints are gonna change day to day, whether it's brand new tint, whether it's a week old, whether a different person's tinting, whether the humidity is high or low, lenses are gonna absorb tint differently and that depends on what material, the temperature, the humidity, the age of the tint, the person tinting. Expect that the tints that are dipped in a solution are gonna change on the weekly, monthly, even daily basis. And let's quickly talk about fashion tints and how fashion tints aren't really the best for protecting your eyes. Now they might look nice, but a rose tinted lens is gonna give you nowhere near the protection that a dark gray lens is gonna give you on your eye. So keep that in mind when your patients are looking for a sunglass. Now every lens should have some kind of UV protection when you order it. Keep in mind that poly's always gonna have UV protection in it. It's built into the material itself. Things like CR39 aren't gonna have any kind of protection from UV rays. So, so make sure your lab is putting some kind of UV protection, whether it's on a hard coat on the backside or a solution-based UV dip to protect the eye from those UV rays. Your surfacing lab is always gonna like something like a pre-tinted lens. It's gonna be easier for the lab to process. It's also gonna be quicker to get back into your hands. Why is that? Because with a solution-based tint, it's gotta go to an extra step. It's gotta go to the tinters, it's gotta be washed, it's gotta be tinted, it's gotta be checked. With a pre-tinted blank, there's nothing else to it. It's just like regular production. It goes through the steps and that's it. When it comes to tinting your lens, know what materials are easier to tint. For example, polycarbonate is the worst material to tint. Why do I say that? Because polycarbonate isn't tintable at all. What you're actually tinting in a polycarbonate lens is the hard coating itself. Now, labs usually run a tintable backside hard coat. We always have to put a backside hard coat on poly lenses because when we surface it, you're losing that material. We then reapply a hard coat that's usually tintable to absorb that tint. We can also use a tintable poly lens and all that means is the front coating on it is tintable itself. Now, when ordering a tinted lens blank, always send a sample in if you have something specific that you want. It's very hard for you to tell the surfacing lab, I want 40% rose or I want 40% green. Like I said before, that's all subjective to the person tinting. Now yes, we can check it and make sure that the light transmission is indeed that what you're ordering. However, the customer may not understand 40%, 20%, they might think they're gonna get something darker. So always make sure that the customer knows what they're getting, show them a sample, show the lab a sample, that way the lab can actually tint it to exactly that what you want. Also, keep in mind, even if you do send a sample in, it may vary a little bit. Like I said, if one sample came from a lab that's using this brand of tint, and then your lab is using this brand of tint, it's not going to match exactly. They're gonna do their best, but it's always best to send a sample because there's no way to do it over the phone or via a online order. One person's rose color tint may be pink and one person's rose color tint may be red. Like I said, some people call different colors some different things, so we really need to see that lens in order to tint it how you want it. Let's quickly talk about AR and tints. So, AR and tints. Why do some people say you shouldn't put AR in tints? Is it bad, is it hard, what is it? Well, the answer is this. Putting AR coating on the front side of a tinted lens does the opposite of what we're trying to achieve. With a tinted lens, we are trying to reduce the amount of light that hits the eye. And what is AR coating? Anti-reflective coating. We're doing the opposite of a tint. We're actually allowing more light to pass through. So, when we put an AR coating on the front of the lens, we're allowing more light to pass through that tinted lens. So, where if you have a 85% tint, and then you put AR coating on the front, you actually will allow more light to pass through, maybe by only a little bit, but still, it is doing the opposite of what we're trying to do. 
Now, putting an AR coating on the back is good because we are reducing the glare and the reflections that the patient's going to see on the back side of the lens, allowing them to see out of the lens more and enhance their vision. When it comes to solution-based tinting, doing a fashion tint or a gradient, AR coating is what makes it very difficult. And why is that? Well, when we AR coat a lens, we have to put it through a very powerful wash to clean and prep the lenses in order to be AR coated. Behind me is our Crest Ultrasonic Cleaner. Now, this machine's been in here for 20 years, cleans hundreds of thousands of lenses in its lifetime. It has five different baths for the lenses to travel through before they make it to the end with three ultrasonic cleaners. Now, when a lens that has a tint goes into it, some of that lens tint is gonna be washed out and it's gonna go right down the drain. So when we tint a lens for AR, we tint it a little darker in order to accommodate for the lens tint that's gonna wash out. We also use different types of washes to accommodate for lenses that have a tint. Shorter ultrasonics, as well as shorter dwell times in the back. So, what's the best tint out there? Well, that depends on your patient. Understand your patients, talk to your patients. What's best for them? Like I said, if the main goal is to protect your eyes, a pre-tinted dark blank is going to be king all of the time. Now, understand if they're somebody who's a fisherman, if they're a skier, understand if they're a device user or if they're a book reader. If somebody isn't looking to spend a ton of money in multiple pair of glasses, always recommend a photochromic lens. Now, Transitions isn't the only photochromic lens out there. Ask your lab for a different type of photochromic lens. It may be a cheaper option for your patient. A couple things to take away from this video. One, sunglasses are not only for the summertime. We have to protect our eyes always. Whether that person works in a studio with bright lights, whether they're a skier, whether they're a boater, whether they're a pilot, they need sunglasses always to protect their eyes. Another note is everyone should have a pair of sunglasses. Whether you offer them a photochromic lens for everyday use or have value frames in your shop to offer that person a cheap alternative for sunglasses. Yes, it's important to get that second pair of sales. However, it's also important to provide our patients and our customers with protection for their eyes. And lastly, help your lab out. Always try to use a pre-tinted blank or allow the lab to have a little flexibility when it comes to tinting the lens that you want. Again, tints may be subjective. If somebody's tinting the lens one day, if it's somebody different the next day, if it's fresh tint, if it's old tint, if it has AR coating, you might not get the same thing even if you ordered it a week before. So make sure that you educate your patients on what the best sunglass type is out there. Let them know all their options out there so they can choose the best lens that will protect their eyes, fit their lifestyle, as well as look great. See you next time.